we are very happy to be here. My name is Hassan Amouz. I'm the product manager for the French government design system, also known as DSFR, or System de Design de l'État. So now I will let Antoine introduce himself and carry on with the presentation. Hi, I'm also very happy to be here. My name is Antoine Puig. I'm a product designer for the Service d'Information du Gouvernement. If you don't know what Service d'Information du Gouvernement is, don't worry. It's a, a simple reality behind that name, a design system for the French state. We'll be presenting that design system in the form of a ping pong between the product side with SN and the design side with myself. Now, before we jump in, and since we're in London, we thought to start with the gov.uk initiative that many of you probably know. It's been a great inspiration for us across the channel, but there's a big difference between the two. While gov.uk turned 300 plus websites into one big website, which is an absolute feat, we needed to keep the diversity of our 3K plus websites while striving to standardize the UI. You might compare our case to a um, licensing your brand to a great number of sub-brands that you don't directly control. And here the brand is the French state, as the flag says. Now, if you're all set, take your passport and follow us across the channel. Back to you, SN. Yeah, bienvenue, as we say in France, welcome. What you see here is just an overview of what, of what we are dealing with. This situation leads us to uh, experience lack of consistency between all the websites, but also a lack of trust from the end users. And yeah, they are the French citizens. And we seem cool, but we are really difficult people, hard to please. <laughs> In fact, nobody thinks that we are cool, so it's just <laughs> me being me. Um, also, in terms of methodology uh, or expertise, everybody is doing or redoing things in its corner reinventing the wheel. So our design system uh, has the ambition to unify both the experience and the way of building digital services. Reaching our users, as you can see, is also one of the main challenges in a very complex organization, and we had to be inventive to tackle that issue. Finally, something typically French, we also had to fight the customary mistrust or hostility towards centralist initiatives. But we were really helped in this uh, matter by a previous project, which we call the, the rebranding of the French state. This uh, project showed us the importance of pairing communication strategies and branding with user journey. This is an old habit for us, given the fact that we uh, initially operate as a communication agency at the Service d'Information du Gouvernement. We also manage the top-level domain .gouv.fr, and also we built the first public website in France back in 95. But let's finish this trip in the past by fast-forwarding to a couple of years ago with Antoine. Right. Let me, let me take you back three years. The year is 2019. There is no design system for the French state, thanks to the blank in the middle. Uh, the blue is everywhere, but it's kind of bluish palette that's never the same blue. Uh, the UX is sometimes cluttered. Uh, and you can see various layouts and components. Fast forward to 2020, a wild design system appears. That's us. Right in the middle there, you can see the first version of our documentation website hosted on Confluence. And gouvernement.fr, our sandbox site for the design system, is already rocking the new redesigned logo. 2021, the SFR is now out of alpha, entering a public beta phase. We already have small websites made by our I, our ambassadors 100% uh, compliant, and the redesigned brand is making good progress in the headers. Now fast forward one more year, beginning, beginning of this year, 2022. The SFR 1.0 is live. Major websites are compliant, such as servicepublic.fr, which is kind of like our, our own Wikipedia for administration. And that's already millions of views yearly for a design system uh, compliant website. You can see here that the headers are pretty much streamlined, and uh, our lovely cards are also ten taking center stage. So uh, whoop, we also parted way with Confluence, by the way. So how did we go from here, sorry, to here in 2019 to here in 2022? Well, two simple words, open source. And I'll let Asen tell you more about that. 
Yeah, thanks, Antoine. The open source system came up as an obvious model, given the fact that we intend to cover more than 1,500 users at the same time. Also, as a public organization, it is required in France that everything we developed remains open source. So we had to integrate this dimension in early in the process and welcome contribution. So also, with the huge diversity of actors, we also needed to invent a hybrid model of governance, both centralized and distributed. So that's why open source was the right model. In this vast ecosystem, you'll find as many use cases as there are websites. We needed to also adjust the level of completion for everything that we developed, so our components act as basics for every other project. So why open source then? Because this is the, the right model to, that maximizes adoption for us in a complex and interdependent environment. But that, that wasn't that easy. Uh, it took us almost six months during COVID to find the right model of governance with other key organizations and partners. It's also the right model and the right candidate to, if you're looking to upscale various type of users, which is also one of our mission as a central government agency in France. But how do we translate this good intention into something more concrete? Well, we started by defining strong principle of design, and I let Antoine walk you through this. All right, we thought how to better make open source a founding principle of our design system uh, then embedding it directly into our own principles of design. Here on the screen are the six principles we've used as the foundation to our system, and also the product using it, hopefully. One of them basically embodies open source, and it's called Keep It Open. To make it more real, we've added tips and tricks for teams using the design system, such as for this specific principle, make the code public, encourage contribution, participate in the constant evolution of the product. What comes with open source is also found in the other principles. Community, trust, ease of use, and all these principles together pave the way for us for that open source spirit. Also, as you might have noticed, our first principle uh, is designed for everyone. That's why we've made accessibility a top concern in our design system. Isn't that right, Asen? Yeah, absolutely. And in France, we are very fond of, of uh, universalist concepts such as this one. Uh, and we make it a priority to apply, at least try to apply them and make them part of our mission. We think that we would have failed in the open source journey if our product and components were not accessible. So we took it as an opportunity with the goal of to integrate by design accessibility into our components, we achieved a very wide adoption. Users saw the design system and its accessibility as an easier way to uh, comply with the law in France stating uh, that every digital service should be and must be accessible to everyone. Accessibility now represents something every, every user agrees on and is no longer put in debate. Thanks to that, our design system is also seen as a helpful tool. Maybe you have noticed, but I'm the guy always talking sweet and it be the big ideas, so back to Antoine to make it more tangible to our users. Right. In, uh, so how in practice did we achieve this? Well, bear with me, we're going a bit technical. We've looked at a critical item in any design system that you probably know and love or not, and it's the colors. We wanted to build a naming convention that allowed for contrast checking uh, without using a plugin like Contrast. For that, we broke down each color in, in our original brand palette in 40 swatches. Here on the screen, you can see the 40 swatches from our brand color, the Blue France. Which, between each swatch is a 25 gap in lightness from the HSL color model. Zero is basically black, and 1,000 is white. With this system, simply keeping a gap larger than 500 between two overlapping colors ensures a WCAG AA contrast ratio. But let me show you a concrete example in the Figma file. I'm here in Figma um, trying to design a uh, survey for um, trying to determine what the best season is. It's kind of silly. Uh, I've used the design system uh, components for my form, but I need something for the top level of my frames, something like a hero banner. Um, I've, I've, I have a few ID, but it doesn't exist yet in the design system. So I've come up with a few drafts. For my title zone here, um, I've chosen pretty basic colors from the colors of the design system. This gray 975 here, and for the text, an almost black gray 50. 
but I'm an Auton guy, and I also, I also want to um, tip the scales in the favor of Auton, of Auton in the final result. So I wanted to give it more funk. I was think thinking maybe orange for the background. So what I can do is just type in orange here, and from the colors, find a background color that is light enough to be a background. So I'm going to go here with a orange 950, uh, beautiful orange. And for the text, I simply need to find uh, a color that has an index that is lower than 450, keeping that 500 uh, ratio, uh, 500 difference. Ideally, I could even type directly here lower than 450, but Figma doesn't support that kind of research yet. <laughs> uh, I'm going to simply uh, type in brown and choose from the list. Um, this brown 425 seems perfect. Oops, I'm on the wrong. I was on the wrong layers. Doing that again. Brown 425. Beautiful. I can quickly fire up contrast and verify that it's accessible. Perfect. Now, I, I was thinking I might add some tags in my title zone. I chose the tags from the design system, but as you can see, they're not very visible on this background. And thinking about it, I'm not even sure that I can use this color combination uh, in the design system. Now, this begs the question, as a design system team, how, we do, how do we keep the, that accessibility built in while avoiding such Christmas tree situation. I'm going to go back into my slide now and show you how we did. We actually introduced two layers of tokens. Uh, the first are called the options here on the screen. They are the raw colors with the index system we just talked about. Then the second is the decisions, what Louis and James were calling the aliases a bit earlier. Same colors, but different names. These names remove the need to think about accessibility at all. Plus, they offer guidance. I'm going to quickly jump back into my demo now and show you how I can use this decision in my design system to uh, choose the colors for my title zone. I simply need to answer three questions. The first question I need to ask is, um, in which context is my color applied? In that case, it's the text. So I'm going to simply type text here. Then the second, the second question I need to ask is, what does my color convey? Is it a state, information, uh, an action? In my case, it's a simple default text, so I'm going to type in default. The third question I need to ask is, which family of colors do I want to use? And in this case, I'm going to use gray. So I'm going to go for this light text default gray simple um, token. For the background, I can do pretty much the same thing, typing in background, if I can type, and choosing from the, from the list. Going back into my slide, I can show you that following these three questions warrants accessibility and DS compliance. I can now create a new hero banner and submit it to the design system team. Uh, they, can, they can then uh, make a new component out of it. And that's the power of semantic tokens. They make it easier to understand what colors mean in a given place, and uh, they help with new component creation within the design system boundaries. So that's how we did it. We've tried to make accessibility universal in our system, as it should be everywhere on the web. Remember what Tim said? But we've kept building speed and ease of use in mind as well. With such a strong color base, we were able to look onwards at growing our design system. Tell us more, Yeah. So to maximize adoption, we made sure that our design system, uh, you, that you can hide or run from our design system. First, because it has administrative bedrock being under the prime minister's authority. The circular we are working on will also be signed by the PM herself, so we will directly benefit from her institutional leverage. Really helpful when you are talking to various administration. Second, because we are a, a communications agency, we have tools to make our design system well known with communication campaign, training courses, webinars, but also video case studies showcasing the best in class. And most importantly, uh, our design system has insiders and allies in almost every other services. We plan to give this informal role a uh, real administrative existence in our circular. But for now, people are doing it because they feel like it. They care about the good of the product and the good of the public service, which is at the core of the open source philosophy and values. 
This approach allows every expertise to be represented and also adapt the design system to every context or frameworks. That's why we strongly and oversee uh, third-party implementations. These are also open source and re represent the main uh, field for uh, contribution today. Another great example in, is redesigning the French Connect button using the French government design system. This marked a great visibility for what we, are, what we were doing at the time, uh, but both for citizens and also for the rest of our user base. The French Connect team also saw the impact of being directly integrated into our design system in terms of coverage and adoption. A real win-win situation. But now, let's get a bit cheesy now, and, uh, because we know that some of, our, some of the community will be looking and will be watching us. So we, want, we would like to use this stage to, back, to give back the support and love they give us every day. So thanks a lot, you guys. It's re really appreciated. And now, after this cheesy moment, maybe it's time to, to be more humble and stop looking that good. Uh, and start focusing on, what, uh, on where we must improve, and feedback is where we need to improve a lot. I let my dear colleague Antoine Chamon on the subject. Right, in order to do that, we've opened multiple channels to reach our users. Of course, we had the holy trinity of design system, all in, all in public versions, in, in our case, the GitHub repository, Figma unsketched version of, of the libraries, and a public documentation website. But we've, we've also opened channels restricted to our community, such as a Slack workspace. Our goal with this channel is to avoid design by committee, keep the conversation open at all times, but also find, find times and places to guide users back into the fold when needed. And for that, we use our weekly offices, office hours to dive deeper into issues. Now, on one particular channel, our community has been growing fast, very fast, asking the question, how do you scale interaction with users when you get one member shy of hell? On a side note, is it's nice to see that we have the same problems as our colleagues in, in, in Conto. At this point, we need another tool. And that tool came in the form of a feature of vote, which is a wide brand feature board with voting tools for our users and contributors that we just launched this summer. Now that we have all that feedback, how do we integrate it in, back into the roadmap? Well, to illustrate that, let me go back to my season form in Figma. I need to add um, a stepper to my form because I have several pages into my, into my poll. The stepper component doesn't exist yet in the design system, so I've also come up with a few ideas using the design system foundations. What I can do here is simply screenshot that um, stepper proposal and uh, put it into the feature abroad for the design system team to review. It will then add to a few other submissions, and then going back into the slide, you will see that it uh, adds up to a few other submissions from the community that will then be included in the design benchmark along with the submission uh, for the design system team, basically us, to come up uh, in the end with a one-size-fits-all component. Of course, such a component comes with downside. It's not ideal. Our stepper lacks features like navigation. It is not clickable. It is not ideal for larger screen while it works best on mobile. But as you know, design systems are a world of compromise. We try to make most of our users happy, get something out fast to drive adoption, and then find the time to iterate and think about an alternate version for other contexts. And iterate, we still need to do. We have a long way to go, hurdles, bo both in technical terms and in governance terms. Technically, we still review and rework submitting components by hand with the proper features we could envision in the future direct contributing to community files, for example. And in terms of governance, our contribution model is very much work in progress. We need to ask ourselves the question, how open is too open? That's the thing with design system. At some point, a strong system will need boundaries checks and balances. We want to encourage contribution on one side, but we want to avoid exponential and unbridled growth. With such clear, clear boundaries set, we could worry about our last major challenge, and that is the usability of our product. Isn't that right, Asen? Absolutely. 
we still have a long way a long way to go as you as you can see although we seem kind of mature we look at improving accessibility of the product itself to work on what's preventing new user uh, new users adoption adoption is really key for us so as always i will let antoine work you through the details of how we made the design system usable at large scale right Thanks, antoine Thank you. Because it's a field where we're still figuring things out, I will just quickly walk you through a bunch of quick practical tips and features we've used to build that open source directly um, into our design system usability. First, we need, to sh we need to share our libraries with everyone that wants or needs to use it. And as you know, Figma orgs are pretty close structure. We could not uh, have all 1.5k developers and designers directly into one single org. So we've had to come up with a workaround. Our files are directly available on the community page of the, the French government. And then it's every team responsibility to duplicate them to their local workspace and then use swap libraries to relink them to their work files and then maintaining them uh, each time there's a new version out. In the future, we hope to have some sort of subscribe to community feature directly into Figma. Second, we did our best to allow, allow free Figma users to enjoy the full features of our design system. To do that, we've split our libraries into two files, the foundations on one side and the components on the other side. Foundation is a styles-only file, so it can be published to any kind of Figma space. Then users can work directly into the components file using a pre-included workspace page and without worrying about the page limit. Third, a few quality of life improvements. We've included instructions into layer names. Figma doesn't allow for much override control. So these allow us to give users guidance every step of the way, even beginners. In that same spirit, all components have description with advice on how to use and technical tips. And of course, we've worked hard to have every variant properties at the parent level, which is going to be way easier now going forward with exposed props feature now in beta. Thanks, Figma, for that. Now back to Asen for a wrap-up. Thank you. Looking back at how we grew and built our design system made us realize that we, are, that we were achieving much more than that. Our team is now seen, and also our department, as a vehicle for innovative processes and also as a team helping to do things the right way. So we now moved from making better websites to making be a better administration and better public services. Of course, we will need to measure the, the impact of the design system itself to stay true to one of our uh, design principles. But with more than 100 websites already using it, we are on the right track to improve citizens' journey here in France. Thanks a lot. That, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.